This is a juga, commonly known as bugle. Great healing herb. I have a few of them here. Ooh, the sun came out. I'm in the woods. This kind of a little slope is covered in ajuga, a bugle. I'm gonna harvest that. Oh, stinging nettles! You just stung me. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Oh, stung me again. Well, yeah, I had to reach <laughs> and I touched stinging nettles. Okay, I'm gonna put these away so I can harvest more without getting stung. <laughs> nettles! I love nettles. <laughs> As I said, this is ajuga. A medicinal herb commonly known as bugle or bugle weed. I've always known it as ajuga though, so that's what I'm gonna call it. It is derived from its Latin name ajuga reptans. Much as the ground ivy which I introduced to you recently, ajuga too is from the mint family of plants and as such shares the most common characteristics of the mints. Those include the square shaped stem, in cross section that is, fine hairs on the stem and the opposite growing leaves. Ajuga is a common plant of the late spring, but despite its documented use as a medicinal herb, few people apparently know about it or harvest it. I once saw a program on TV where they said Ajuga is a plant most of us see, but few know by name. It seems Ajuga has fallen out of the radar of modern herbalists, but in the past it had a prominent place in the old Europe's folk medicine. English botanist Nicholas Culpepper wrote in his 1652 book The English Physician that Quote, the decoction of the leaves and flowers made in wine and taken dissolveth the congealed blood in those that are bruised inwardly by a fall or otherwise and is very effectual for any inward wounds. It is wonderful in curing all manner of ulcers and sores, whether new and fresh or old and inveterate, ye, gangrenes and fistulas also, if the leaves bruised and applied or their juice be used to wash and bathe the place, and the same made into a lotion, and some honey and alum, cureth all sores in the mouth and gums, be they ever so foul, or of long continuance, and worketh no less powerfully and effectually for such ulcers and sores, as happen in the secret parts of men and women." Unquote. The reported ability of ajuga to stem bleeding and speed up wound healing has earned it a moniker Carpenter's Herb. A Czech herbal book says a plethora of active phytochemical compounds is responsible for the herb's healing effects. Those include tannins and lycopene, as well as various beneficial acids, such as a caffeic acid, chlorogenic acid, elagic acid, lithospermic acid and rosmarinic acid. Ajuga is also a source of resin and magnesium. Aside from the reported ability to stop bleeding, the infusion from ajuga has been traditionally used to aid with respiratory disorders, whereby it's said to reduce the intensity of coughing, relieves irritation in the throat, and helps remove phlegm. It's further reported to balance blood circulation and mitigate the negative effects of alcoholism. Last but not least, one of the chief health benefits of ajuga is its sedative effect which is said to help with sleeplessness and insomnia. For that reason, my herbal book says ajuga is one of the best herbal narcotics. Remember though, that as with all natural remedies, it's best to take them under supervision of a medical professional and you should always try a small amount first to make sure you're not allergic to any part. If you're pregnant or nursing, you should avoid taking it because it's never been tested for possible adverse effects. Okay, let's talk about how to identify ajuga. 
Ajuga is a perennial plant that blooms from late April to early July, depending on your location. It doesn't grow very tall, but often looks stout and thick. Typical height is between 12 to 25 centimeters. The stem, as mentioned earlier, has a square cross section and is pale green to purplish in color. It doesn't branch. There are two leaves per node along the stem growing opposite each other. The ones on the lower end of the stem have smoother edges and are wedge shaped, whereas the ones on top of the stem are lens shaped and have dull teeth. The flowers develop along the upper half of the stem and form a horold spike. They grow quite densely and abundantly along that spike. The flowers are a mixture of shades of blue and violet in color. They consist of a lower and upper lip, or corolla, and are housed within a green calyx with five teeth. The lower corolla has three rounded lobes. The middle lip is largest in size and is notched and decorated with dark blue-violet lines in a lighter background, which act as nectar guides. As for where to find ajuga, in my neck of the woods, it only grows in shady or partially shaded areas of the forest. I've never seen it growing on an open field or a meadow. In the old Slavic lore, there is a saying that if you lose your voice, Bugglewid will return it to you. That saying came to be after the centuries of the herbs used have proven it to be effective in restoring one's voice lost as a result of inflammation of the vocal cords. These days, which I think is unfortunate, you mostly find references to ajuga reptans in stores, which sell it as an ornamental plant capable of forming flowering ground cover with its distinctively violet blue inflorescence. I however think this meriting plant deserves a renaissance as a medicinal herb our grandmothers knew it as. It is well worth having it back on our radar. The sun creating this contrast. My camera has troubles focusing as it is. You know the sun. This is metals. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be careful around them. <laughs> 